us the example 2D in our binomial theorem. And hopefully you've had a look at examples 2A, B, and C. We're looking at different terms that we can uh, expand in these functions. So up until now, the two different parts, the first term and the second term, have either been a number or a letter or two different letters. But what we're going to do in this example is look at an example where the variable in both of the terms is the same, in this case, an x. And what we can do, we could use the same form as we did uh, in the first three examples. What we'd find at the end, we'd have to do some simplifying. I'm going to show you a technique where we can simplify, first of all, before we actually write out the expansion. Okay, so I'll demonstrate that by writing out the function 3x squared plus 2 over x to the power 4. And we're going to expand that using the binomial theorem, which says that it's the sum of the values from r equals 0 to n of n choose r x to the power n minus r times y to the r. That's the kind of general form of that. So we can fill it out for our values of n, which is 4, and say that it's the sum from r equals 0 to 4 of 4 choose r. Now, the first term, which is x here, is actually 3x squared. So we've got 3x squared to the power of 4 minus r multiplied by our second term is positive 2 over x. So I'm going to write that down as 2x to the negative 1 to the power r. You'll see in a minute that the, the negative index is more helpful. So what we would have normally done in the previous examples is just started to write out all the different terms in the expansion. But I'm going to do an extra step here before I do. And that is, I'm going to split up the numbers and the letter terms here. So I've got 3 to the power 4 minus r times x squared to the power 4 minus r. And then the second term I can write as 2 to the power r and x to the power negative 1 to the power r. So I'm separating the letter, the, the coefficient and the variable term in each of the brackets, keeping the correct powers with them. Now, if you have a look at that, you can see we've got one more level of simplifying that we can do, because we can say that our numbers are four, 3 to the power of 4 minus r. This term here, which is x squared to the power of 4 minus r, they multiply those two powers together, we get x to the power of 8 minus 2r. We've got 2 to the power of r, and then the second x term becomes times x to the power of negative r, multiplying the two powers together. And then one last rearrangement, I'm going to put all my coefficients together, all my numbers together at the front. That's 4 choose r, that's a number. <coughs> Excuse me. I've got 3 to the power of 4 minus r, and my 2 to the power r is also a number. So that is my coefficient. And what I can do is I can bring 8, sorry, x to the <coughs> x to the power 8 minus 2r, and I've got x to the power negative r. If I multiply those two terms together, I add the powers, which actually gives me 8 minus 3r. So I've got x to the power 8 minus 3. And that might seem like a bit of um, kind of extra work, but once you get the hang of it, you can write that out quite quickly. And the advantage that we have now is that when we're writing out our expansion, we've actually simplified it down to one term in x for each of the uh, parts of the expansion. So I'm not going to start writing it out in full. And I've got five terms because I've got r equals 0 up to 4. Five terms, so when I start writing out 4, choose 0. And r is 0, 4 minus 0 becomes 4, so it's 3 to the power of 4. And 2 to the power of 0, I'm just going to write down uh, nothing for that because that's just 1. And then I've got x to the power of 8 minus 3r, uh, r is 0, so it's just going to be x to the 8. That's my first term. When r is 1, 4 choose 1. Our power of 3 becomes 4 minus 1, which is 3. And our power of 2 becomes 
1 and our power of x becomes 8 minus 3 which is 5. See and I can do that for each term as I go along. Power of x when r is 2 becomes 8 minus 6 which is 2. Remember that 4 choose 3, r is 3, so it becomes 3 to the power 1 times 2 to the power 3. And my if r is 3, 8 minus 9 is negative 1. And then I've got 4, r is 4, so 4 minus 4 is 0, so 3 to the power 0 is just 1. I've got 2 to the power 4. And I've got x to the power 8 minus 12 is negative 4. Okay, I've got maybe a wee bit of extra uh, work to do here. I've got row 4 of Pascal's triangle. 1, 4, 6, 4, 1 for all my coefficients. So that means I've got 1 times 3 to the 4 is 81. x to the power 8, that's that whole term. Uh, my next term here, I'm not going to work it all out in my head just yet. I've got plenty of time. So my, I've got 4 is my coefficient. 4 times 27 times 2x to the 5. Let's just leave it as that for the moment. Plus 6 times 9 times 4x squared. Plus, or back down to 4 times 3 times 8x to the negative 1, plus 1 times 2 to the 4 is 16x to the negative 4. And one last line, simplifying all of that, 81x to the power 8. Uh, 4 times 27 is 108 times 2 is 216x to the 5. My third term, 6 is times 9 times 4, 6 times are 54, times 4 is 216x squared. My x to the negative 1 term, 12 8s are 96. I'm going to put my x as a positive uh, index on the bottom of the fraction, and I've got plus 16 over x to the 4. Now, it might seem a bit of a longer way. You could have written out the 2x terms separately and then simplified it but this is a good skill to have uh, later on anyway so it's worthwhile learning how to simplify the the general term before so that we've got here uh, at this point here it's worth being able to write that as we're going to do that later anyway and then we can use it to work out uh, the answer for this expansion so you can have a go at that um, and try some of the the exercises uh, the questions in exercise 2 in our textbook uh, which involve uh, x terms in both of the uh, the parts of the expansion okay try that